All right, so last time we managed to get through the proof that um, parity is uh, maintained, or that the parity of a uh, permutation element is unique, i.e. if you have a permutation and you look at the number of transpositions that it takes to produce that permutation, then that number of transpositions will be unique up to parity. So as a corollary to that, um, I don't know, I guess this isn't a corollary. This is just something that kind of, um, oh, well, it is a corollary. So never mind. There exists a unique, we'll call it sign. This is a homomorphism from Sn to the group plus and minus one under multiplication such that, um, sine of tau is going to be minus 1 um, for all tau uh, transposition. So we know that if you take um, an element, so, so yeah, this, this makes sense because certainly the existence we know because if you take any, if you take a product of transpositions, then the um, sign is going to be, if you've got an odd number of transpositions, then it's going to be negative one because that's by definition. And then using that, this is a group homomorphism. If you've got two transpositions, then you get negative one times negative one, which is one. Um, so basically, if you take a product of n transpositions, then the sign is going to be negative 1 to the power of n, which is going to be 1 if n is even and negative 1 if n is odd. Um, and certainly this is, so that's why it exists because it satisfies, um, it is a group homomorphism. And the reason it's unique is because, well, um, let's see here. Sn is, yeah, Sn is uh, generated by transpositions. Do we prove that? Yeah, we prove that. Because, well, yeah, anything can be, any permutation can be written using transpositions. And so the fact that we've determined this homomorphism on a generating set for Sn means that we've determined it everywhere. And um, so the other thing is that, so it's, it's mapping into plus or minus one as a group. So its image is gonna be a subgroup. So its image is either gonna to have to be just one or it's gonna to have to be plus minus one. If it's just, um, if it's just one, then it's the trivial, it's the, the, the trivial homomorphism, and so the sign of any transposition will be one, and so that, that's no good. That's not what we want. Um, furthermore, what else? Um, is there anything else we need to say to get that there exists a unique homomorphism? Um, certainly, if, if you were to have a uh, any homomorphism. So it's enough to determine it on the generating set. Um, and if it's negative one, yeah. So, so that's, that's it. That's all you need. That's all we need to say about that. So note, and this is really confusing when you're learning this for the first time. Um, but the more you think about parity in terms of transpositions, the less confusing it is. Um, Cycles, um, um, cycles of odd length are even. Those of even length are. Odd. 
So that's really weird. Um, and so you might think maybe we defined it backwards, but I don't think so. I think, I think the way we've defined it is really the more natural way because transpositions are really sort of your building blocks. Um, and even though a transposition consists of two different, um, am, I, am I going somewhere with this argument that's going to be productive? I don't, I don't think so. Um, you just have to think of it in terms of transpositions. And remember that transpositions, every transposition has an even number of indices. A transposition has two indices in it, so its length is two. Um, one way to help remember this is if you remember the number of the, the way we defined n was we took the number of indices in an, in an r cycle, well we, which is r. So we took r and then we subtracted one. Um, and so that's why you get this uh, discrepancy between the, the number of indices in a permutation and the parity. Um, Here's an observation that might make it a little more intuitive or, or might, might make a little more sense. Uh, you can uh, define parity in terms of crossings. And what I mean by that is if you look at the permutation one, two, three, Let's look at this in terms of where it sends elements. One will go to two, two will go to three, and three will go to one. And if you look here, I've circled the number of times that these lines intersect, and they intersect two times. And it turns out it doesn't matter how you draw these, um, I mean, of course, you can't go like around here and under. That's cheating. Um, but any way you draw these uh, arrows, like if, if you were if you're to draw them more like squiggly and complicated, like maybe you could draw them in such a way that they would intersect more times. But every time you would do that, it would increase by a factor of two or decrease by a factor of two. Well, not a factor of two, but increase by two or decrease by two. And so the parity would be maintained. Um, and I think that gets into sort of like more not theory and topological stuff. Um, so I think you, th th there's more, there's a lot of work you have to do if you want to rigorously prove this. But anyways, um, that's a more visual way of seeing it and a way of seeing why we should call it parity this way because it's the number, it's the, the actual, whether the number of crossings here are even or odd. Um, so, th so that's sort of neat. You can look at that on your own if you want. Try to find some more sources for that. But in, for us, we're going to find the alternating group. Um, is a n a subgroup of s n consisting of all even permutations in s n. So this will contain um, things which can be written as a product of two transpositions, such as three cycles, which is counterintuitive because three is odd, but three cycles can be written as product of two two cycles.